Hello everyone, and what is hip? And hopefully that is not the intro that sticks. Um, my name is Tyler, and this is my first YouTube video here, and I'm super excited to be here and to be able to really talk about my passions with people since I don't get too many opportunities to, to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm gonna skip the rest of the introductions here and just cut right to the chase. Um, I figured, what better way to start a YouTube channel about video gaming and, and music and all of that than with the game that really started my love for RPGs and really video games in general. And that game is Dragon Warrior for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, I grew up playing Dragon Warrior just constantly, uh, ever since I was six, seven years old. And <laughs> you may be thinking I don't look a day over 30, but uh, I, I promise you, I feel at least 50 years old. Um, but in all seriousness, I was born in 1997. Uh, that makes me 24 as of the time of this video. And the reason why I grew up playing these old Nintendo Entertainment System games and retro gaming in general was because my parents grew up with those consoles and they kept everything. They kept the games, they kept the consoles, and they introduced those to me when I was when I was very young. And we had a GameCube, which was the, the modern system at the time, and I played that all the time as well. But I always found myself going back to the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Nintendo, um, all of those. and. The system that I found myself going back to probably the most was actually the NES and the games I remember playing on there. There was this one volleyball game, I think it was called V-Spike, Super V-Spike Volleyball uh, for the NES. It was so much fun and I do not consider myself an avid sports gamer by any means, especially when it comes to modern sports games, but these older sports games from you know the 80s and the 90s and even the early mid 2000s were so much fun um, this the super v spike uh, volleyball for the nintendo entertainment system i remember just uh, getting so into that game and and jumping up and spiking the ball down and just having a blast and there's this little girl this woman who who popped up and was like Oh, one point here, one point there, and there's just something about it that I, I just I loved so much. And that was one game I went to all the time. In addition to that, I played Super C uh, Contra. All just whenever I had that system hooked up, that game I always made sure to play. And I never ever made it past, I don't think I made it past the second level, so I never got really far with that game. For those of you who have played it, know that it is extremely brutal. And I, you know, I probably die within the first 15, 15 minutes of playing and have to restart from the beginning. But I did so with a smile on my face, maybe a vein or two popping out here or there, but I loved that game so much. The music was fantastic as well. And one other game that I played all the time was Bionic Commando. And that game, I remember just thinking the the grappling hook gun thing, where you shoot up and you have to swing from the raptor beams and, and all that was the coolest thing. You couldn't jump, and that took a long time for me to get used to because I, I just muscle memory with you know Mario Bros and just really any game after Mario, you press a button and you jump. And you couldn't do that in this game. You had to grapple hook. Uh, so that was that was really fun as well. But the game we're here to talk about is Dragon Warrior. And this game has always mystified me ever ever since I was I was young. And the reason being was I would, you'd put the cartridge into the, the NES and you press the power button and all of a sudden the title screen popped up and you start hearing the music by Koichi Sugiyama and that music, I remember to this day just sitting there and listening to that music and how I just, I felt like I was being 
poured on by a big bucket of, of adventure. And there were times where I would simply turn on the NES with Dragon Warrior and listen to the title screen and not even play the game. Um, I did that many, many times. So that music really does have a, 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 a fond place in my heart. But anyways, so I would, I turned on Dragon Warrior and I play it and you get put into the, you make your character and you get put into the throne room with the king and he tells you to, there's a, there's a demon lord and you have to go out and kill him and there's a, a princess who is missing and you gotta save him and I, I, I was getting all hyped up because you have the castle music going on in the background but all of that excitement went away <laughs> the moment I tried to leave the room or to open a chest or to talk to anybody and the reason being is that unlike most modern games you don't simply go up to an item or a person or a door and press a button to do that. You, you don't do that. You go up to them, press a button, and then a little sub-menu pops up with talk, item, stairs, door, so on and so forth. And you have to scroll down and you have to pick that, pick that item. And then you finally talk or you do that action. So it was an added step to the whole process. I just remember hating that when I was a kid. There's still a part of me that just, there's just a little burning piece of hatred for that. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know why it affected me so much, but I absolutely hated it as a kid. But eventually, I got used to it. And I made my way outside of the castle, and I was into the, the castle town, the first town area of the game. And I explored that area, and I talked to everyone, and I was just letting the music wash over me. And I was so excited. And then I finally left the town and this is where the anger <laughs> really started because I made my way out of the town, I took maybe two or three steps and all of a sudden I'm in a fight with a slime. And I remember thinking this was such a cool looking little enemy design and I was like all right this will be easy and he killed me within several shots and I could not figure out for the life of me what happened. And so I had to restart the game because I didn't save. So I restarted the game, did all the intro stuff again, made my way out of town, started running through the overworld, and I got to another fight. And I died again. And I was so frustrated because again, I didn't save and I had to restart the whole process. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And that was, <laughs> that was something that went on for quite a long time. Granted, I was about, you know, seven years old, six, seven years old at the time. So I didn't quite understand what I was supposed to do. I just knew that I liked the music and I liked the way the game looked and I wanted to keep playing it. Even if I would die within 20 minutes of starting a new game over and over again. Um, but. I did that for, for a little while and a couple years passed and I, I, I got a little older and a little wiser and I decided to read the manual for the game and this was a very important moment for me because I didn't read manuals and, and all of that because back then, it, it was about the GameCube era, even back then it was not expected to go back and read the manual for the game to figure out how it worked and all of that. Um, so I didn't realize that for these older games, especially from the 80s, um, early 90s specifically, you it was really almost required to sit down, read the manual, and figure out what you figure out how to play the game. Um, and so I did that. And I don't have my original NES copy here with me, um, but I do have my manuals from back then. And here's the Dragon Warrior manual. And I remember opening it up and looking at the art and just thinking it was the coolest thing ever. Here's the map of Alfgard right here on just the second, third page. I mean, how cool is that? This is something we don't see enough of nowadays. And here we got the story of Dragon Warrior. Oh, this is why I'm playing. I'm not just saving a, a princess or 
killing a demon lord. I guess, I guess really you are. <laughs> the story wasn't too complicated back then, but we did know that King Lorik was the 16th. And I don't think that was set right in the beginning of the game. So there's a little tidbit. But I remember looking through this manual and figuring out, oh, that's what a command window is. That's what a text window is. That's what a status window is. That's what HP and MP stand for, because I didn't know what that meant. I thought, you know, maybe HP stood for <laughs> hippopotamus. I'm serious, I, I did think that at one time. Um, but hit points and, and, and magic points and all of that, and I remember just something clicking. And that got me to read the other book that came with the game. And Dragon Warrior came with two books, the instruction booklet and the Explorer's Handbook. And the Explorer's Handbook was basically a, a strategy guide appetizer. So it guided you up to a certain point of the game and told you what to do and gave you some hints. And there's this one part of the book that I remember reading and laughing at because it was so relatable. And it says, you're still weak, inexperienced, and unarmed when you leave Tantagal Castle. In this condition, even a slime can give you a good fight. Go immediately to Breconary, the town nearby, to purchase weapons and armor. That was the solution to my problem. It was so simple, yet my, you know, my little six, seven year old mind just, it, it didn't know that because this was the first game that I've experienced that was a true RPG. And so this told me what I needed to do. And I remember getting so excited that I, I read through the whole um, handbook, the whole handbook. And I was so excited to go back, turn on Dragon Warrior, and to start actually playing the game. And that's what I did. So, I remember going back to Dragon Warrior, starting a new game, typing in my name, doing the King stuff, all of that, and going over to the first town and buying my weapon and armor. And I remember leaving that town, going back to the overworld, and massacring those slimes. It was such a, it's a heroic feeling <laughs> that I had yet to feel until that moment. And I was, I was killing these enemies and I was getting the experience points and I was leveling up. Um, v has done well and we have granted you another level. I remember just thinking that medieval gibberish was so fun. And then I was killing these slimes in one shot and I was killing the red slimes in one shot. And I was, I was on top of the world. So then I went up and I, I went to the other towns. I followed the, the instruction, the explorer's handbook here. And I remember going through the first cave and being freaked out about the cave and not knowing how to make it light in there because it was pitch black. And I read that and I was like, oh, I have to use a torch. No, duh. Uh, but I did that and got through that and I played that game for as long as I could until it eventually got too hard and too tedious for me at that age. I remember just putting it down and forgetting about it for a while. And I'd come back to it every once in a while throughout the years just to experience those beginnings again. But I never beat the game and I really didn't get too far. Now, we jump to the year 2018, roughly a little over 10 years later. And I'm from Portland, Oregon. And we have this thing called the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, as I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. And I, I went to that every year for years. And at this time, I was in New York City. I was, I was in college and studying music. And I flew back. I wanted to fly back for this expo. And I did. Uh, one of the first vendors I, I went to was none other than John Riggs. And he was, he was fantastic. We talked for a while. He's a super kind guy. And at his table, he had this right here, a complete in box Japanese Game Boy Color. I mean, how cool is this? It's just so fun. And I was like, I had to have it. He had it at a decent price. So I bought this and I remember going home, looking at this and thinking, I need to get Dragon Warrior for the Game Boy Color, because I knew there was a, a Dragon Warrior game for the Game Boy Color. So I went online uh, after I had flown back home and I bought this 
little guy right here. Dragon Warrior 1 and 2 for the Game Boy Color. And I was so excited to play this. And I remember getting that package. This was on a nice, cool fall evening in New York City. And I had my windows open and the, the sun was shining in and I turned it on. Oh, and just listening to that ping. And I was so excited because I knew my journey was about to begin. At a much older, arguably wiser age than I was when I was eight, nine years old. And I, I had a couple of requirements with this. I told myself, no strategy guides, no modern workarounds, so no playing this game on a Switch or, or even a Game Boy Advance SP or anything modern. I wanted to play this the way it was intended back in the 90s or the early, early 2000s, whenever that game came out. And that's what I did. And let me tell you this, I would not have done that any other way. It was such a humbling, down-to-earth experience to be able to limit myself to just the game. No achievements, no awards, no friend requests, no notifications, nothing. It was just me, the game, and the music. And it was wonderful. And I played through probably 80, 80 to 90 percent of the game. I still have not beat it, but I, I do plan on going back at some point. But just immersing myself back into the world that started it all for me. Even though it was in a different form, I felt so at home. And it was it was really a wonderful experience. And I, I did look up after the fact that this game was made a little easier for the Game Boy Color. So maybe I'm not the, the master gamer that I thought I once was after getting so far in this game. But there's still such a sense of accomplishment for getting through a game like Dragon Warrior. And I'll be completely honest, the Dragon Warrior Dragon Quest series is by far not my my greatest, my most favorite series. I, in fact, I'm really not a huge fan. I, I do enjoy, I still love the music and I love the art and, and all of that, uh, but I haven't played most of the Dragon Quest games. I did play Dragon Quest XI, and I, I played a little bit of Dragon Quest VIII, but I just couldn't get into those games as much as I did with the original Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior. And even though this is not my favorite series by far, I would have to say that Dragon Warrior is one of the games that really impacted my life the most. It introduced me to a whole different art form, a different a different way of storytelling because before this I was playing Mario and and Pokemon and and all of that. But this was really the first game that that taught me really the benefits of struggling and grinding and the feeling of accomplishment that you get after finally beating your, your first boss that you've been dying over and over with. And I, I am so grateful that I got to experience this game at such a young age, even though I, I really didn't like it at some points because of how brutal it was. I, this, I would not be the gamer that I am today if it was not for Dragon Warrior. So, with that, I'll end this here. I want to thank you all so much for sitting through this and really listening to me geek out about my gaming origins, part of my gaming origins, and, and uh, why, I'm, why I'm here today and why I love RPGs and that art form as much as I do. So, let me know what some of your most impactful games are. I would love to know some of your guys' origin story. I'm here to I'm here to geek out about all of this stuff and to to communicate with you all. So hit me up and let's 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 have a good time. So thank you 
guys so much for joining me today. Have a good one.